Good morning to you all, and uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, in this uh, meeting at the uh, International Arena of AFSI. Uh, ours is a very topical issue. I'm Alessandro Baffi, I'm a journalist, and I also work in TV. And uh, this is a very topical issue because uh, it concerns uh, uh, the uh, topic of uh, migration, uh, uh, which is a dramatic phenomenon, uh, uh, both in Italy and Europe uh, and worldwide. Last year, uh, there were uh, more migrations uh, than uh, in uh, the whole history, which is an impressive data. It is an impressive data given by the United Nations and the UNHCR, as in the branch of the United Nations dealing with migration. The title of this meeting uh, um, speaks for itself. Here, we're not talking from an ideological perspective, uh, as uh, uh, is often done in a very violent way on this topic. But we're going to speak about this topic by uh, telling experiences uh, on the way. AFSI is hosting uh, uh, all of us and is organizing uh, this meeting and is an expert in this field. This is very well known uh, by the audience uh, at the meeting. Uh, the form of international cooperation done by AFSI means uh, uh, distance support. Uh, and this is not something that uh, uh, we have just started doing now because there is a slogan, let's help them at home. I will immediately give the floor to our speakers. In any case, this morning we're going to deal with this topic. Uh, uh, migrants between alternatives to clandestinity and assisted voluntary returns. So, we're going to first give the floor to Hafsi, our host. Giancarla Boreatti will tell us uh, what uh, Hafsi is doing in practice to fight against uh, illegal migration. She's going to focus on a project uh, implemented in collaboration with DG Home, uh, representing the European Union in this, in this um, context, and the Italian Episcopal Conference. Uh, AFSI Refugee Network is a very interesting. I'm going to give her the floor, but before that, uh, we also have with us uh, Jean-Marc De Verp, uh, team leader and uh, trust fund manager for West Africa. He will uh, talk to us about it. Uh, then we have Seydou Kokonate, president of uh, uh, cooperative Bellafon Italy and Ivory Coast, uh, who is partner of the AFSI project, uh, and ambassador uh, Ranieri Sabatucci, who is going to speak about uh, uh, the possible way forward for assisted voluntary returns. So without further ado, let's start with AFSI and uh, uh, what you are doing in this project to fight against illegal migration. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you so much for this opportunity in which we are going to talk about uh, particularly complex experience as far as we are concerned. Uh, these are initial attempts to carry out initiatives both in Italy and in the countries where migration originates or where migrants return to. For uh, development uh, projects, uh, we deal with the transit countries and uh, countries where migrants live or they go to. When we started to work uh, on this in Italy, we wondered to whether on which kind of level we should have worked. And we wanted to design initiatives uh, that could integrate what uh, public institutions in Italy and in Europe were doing. So in Italy, we started uh, collaboration projects with a collaboration of institutions carrying out uh, 
that deal with the management of migrant people in uh, the infrastructure where they are welcomed when they arrive. We have tried to create a link between what happens in Italy and what happens in the origin countries. In particular, I would like to uh, illustrate three projects. One is funded by the European Union, and it is aimed at uh, promoting, raising the awareness of migrant people not to leave their country. We are implementing this in the Ivory Coast. Then a project financed by the Episcopal Conference it is a freedom to free to stay, free to leave. So together with uh, our awareness raising activities uh, about not leaving the country, we are also talking about integration in uh, Niger and in Tunisia. And then there is a third project that we are carrying out in Italy that is financed by the Interior Ministry and the uh, European Union with the FAMI call, which is an international uh, project on assisted voluntary returns. In particular, I would like to focus on awareness raising activities not to leave a country that we are carrying out in the Ivory Coast. We are present in four or five cities in Ivory Coast, Abidjan, Borges, Loaya, and Muzucro, and we are collaborating with about 16, 17,000 people who are in fact represented by the local communities by small towns, we uh, meet uh, schools, uh, parishes, and uh, heads of uh, villages. And we decided to use a particular method. Basically, we uh, work along three main uh, lines. First, we try and provide correct information on what happens in a journey and on the real situation in Italy and in Europe. That is, what the situation is like for the people who decide to leave the country to go to Europe so that they are aware of what uh, they should expect. What we see in this experience is that there is always an underestimation of the risks and an over-evaluation of the benefits that can be obtained in Europe. So first of all, we want to give correct and concrete information at this level. The other line in this methodology is to work hard, creating proactive uh, uh, ties with local institutions, local authorities, with uh, the heads of the villages and with the residents where the awareness raising campaigns are uh, promoted with uh, school teachers, especially in the Ivory Coast, but also in other countries of the sub-Saharan Africa. The governments are seriously worried of all these people leaving their countries. So we want to collaborate in a way that uh, collaboration is intense and uh, efficient with people and institutions that are influential at the local level. The third line in this method uh, involves the use of communication tools. For example, we realized that in many cities of the Ivory Coast, uh, there used to be campaigns uh, that uh, have been considered not so much as a tool through which to know the real situation, but they are seen as a barrier. Uh, it's a kind of information that is perceived as a stop from going to Europe. So we carried out research within the context of the European Union to find communication methods and partners with whom to communicate to have uh, persuasive uh, and realistic tools in order to provide concrete information. So we have adverts, uh, TV campaigns, uh, and uh, communication tools that are easy to deliver. This uh, is integrated with uh, the uh, Episcopal Conference project, uh, which uh, supports a number of activities uh, that we are carrying out uh, in the destination country. In the Ivory Coast, uh, our presence has been there for many years, so we are well rooted in the community. 
And this has enabled us to provide opportunities, which uh, in some cases were financed uh, through other projects, uh, uh, opportunities of employment. So we do an arrays arrays awareness raising campaign, and then we offer a concrete opportunity. We are working with uh, the Labor Ministry and with the agency in charge of vocational training. And in this way, we can give the opportunity to attend uh, vocational training courses or to be part of a network of artisans of carpentry, for example, that are setting up small businesses. In our view, uh, this tool is important. Uh, communication always should give a, a proactive uh, proposal within the country that is interested. So why is it uh, appropriate uh, not to leave? Because there can be concrete opportunities if people stay uh, in their country of origin. And with the uh, CHAI project, the project of the Episcopal Conference, so we could use uh, some uh, resources to support uh, voluntary returns, assisted voluntary returns. We are financing 50 voluntary returns from Tunisia and from Niger. In both countries, there's a from both countries, there's institutional representatives, so they will tell us about the features of these uh, uh, centers uh, that manage migrant people in these transit countries where there is still an exodus from sub-Saharan Africa to North Africa to reach Italy through different routes. And uh, this uh, journey uh, faces a number of concrete difficulties indeed. And then we have the organiz International Organization of Migration with which there is a cooperation to work on integration. We uh, want to uh, use financial resources to start uh, jobs that can provide an income when people return home. So this is an initiative that is funded by the Episcopal Conference in the transit areas. Then in Italy, we had funding from the Interior Ministry to manage assisted voluntary returns project in collaboration with a foundation that deals with the migrant people and refugees and they have been working in this field for many years. Since last April, we have started uh, assisted voluntary returns both in the Ivory Coast and in Nigeria. We work uh, uh, with these projects in countries where our presence has been there for many, many years because we think that the local experience is a great advantage to support these reintegration projects because they know the community, they know the local economy, and so they give us the opportunity to uh, make these uh, interventions uh, efficient. The features of the project from the Interior Ministry are this. There's a package of services and a package of economic resources that are worth 400 euros when they leave and 2,000 euros that are um, allotted uh, when people return. But the whole package includes the assessment of the will of the person to return to their country. So nothing is forced. There is a platform of the Ministry of the Interior where applications can be uploaded, and the people that decide to go back to their country are managed through that platform. There's a number of services, for example, collection of documents to go back, the purchase of the ticket to go back, and above all, the creation of an integration project. So since the people are in Italy already there, people have to start working on what kind of job they will have when they go back. And we are particularly interested in managing this service package that is provided upon integration. We don't want to waste the resources used in this investment when the person starts a project like this. So we are there when the people arrive at the airport, there's people welcoming there, we inform the family, and we give some induction at a social level because some people have been away for a number of years, so they may not be uh, fully aware of the local situation. It's a new start, and then we monitor the uh, next few months uh, after arrival. 
my final point is this. I believe that it is not possible to use just one single tool, one single means for managing migration. Creativity is definitely needed to find efficient measures for each individual person who decides to go back to their country of origin or for those who decide to, re to remain. We are really interested in emphasizing the experience that people have in Italy, even if it looks like a failure, because these people have experience in the West. And sometimes this experience may look like a failure. But if a person is helped in emphasizing and fostering the knowledge that they have of uh, their life experience abroad, maybe there's not going to be a result in the short term, but it can be part of a positive journey for themselves. And we want to be part of this challenge. Thank you so much. Thank you, Giancarla Boreati. We want to be creative to find efficient measures. That's what you said. That's very interesting. Thank you so much for uh, this uh, outlook that uh, you have uh, made. Now I give the floor to Mr. Jean-Marc Deverp, who is a team leader and uh, manager of the Trust Fund for West Africa. And he's going to give an example of this kind of creativity that has been mentioned on how to rethink the terms of international cooperation with, in comparison with the uh, typical way of uh, supporting as it used to be in the past. I don't speak uh, Italian, but uh, I will do my intervention in English. Um, uh, first of all, I think that uh, we have to focus uh, on the possible alternative to the choice between irregular migration and voluntary return, which is the title of this, uh, of this forum. Because indeed, the, the trust fund has been created in 2015, so a little bit of history. Um, at the same time, then the signature of the Valletta Agreement, um, tackling the root causes of irregular migration in countries of origin and transit and helping to prevent human trafficking and facilitate return. Basically, this trust fund has not been created for uh, ad addressing migration. Um, the, uh, to give you a figure, uh, only 30% of the funds are dedicated purely to migration, basically through the joint initiative with the IOM, where in fact we work closely with this organization, but also with NGOs in terms of return and reintegration. Just uh, the setup of the of the of the trust fund. Um, the trust fund is mostly financed by uh, European funds, so Commission funds, um, mostly by European Development Fund, but also by uh, member states. Um, more or less 500 million uh, compared with the four billion and a half that we have uh, in the trust fund. The trust fund is divided in three windows. So we have the window uh, north uh, window that address the problems of migration in Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Egypt as well, but Libya and Algeria are the most uh, important uh, countries where uh, we have uh, these activities. My window, so my window between brackets, uh, which is the Sahel window, uh, where we cover uh, West Africa and there is the uh, East Africa uh, window, which is um, uh, also uh, managed by, by colleagues. We address uh, the problems not only in uh, Sahel, but also the Lac Chad, which is uh, important because we have this problematic of the Lac Chad, but also uh, the problematic in uh, Nigeria with Boko Haram. Um, 
the governance of the EU trust fund is done through a board, so it's a full transparency, meaning that we have not only the donors, but we have also the beneficiary countries, which is important because all the strategy and the actions that will be done through the EU trust fund are decided by not only the donors, but also the beneficiaries. And uh, we have, uh, but this is purely administrative, we have also a system of approving the projects which are um, proposed uh, through an analysis on the ground and through also uh, the urgency because you don't have to forget that one of the main concepts of the of the trust fund is to address urgent situations just uh, for if you need more information you can go and google eu trust fund africa and then you have access to the website which is really a very transparent tool and you can go and see projects by countries or by uh, subjects so this is for the eu trust fund um, Addressing uh, these uh, possible alternatives, for us, we have resilience, but the main focus is done on job creations. So, the UTF uh, top priority is uh, job creation, and it's a strong correlation between the lack of economical opportunities, high population growth, difficult access to land for the youth, and the decision to migrate irregular and unsafely. So basically this decision and uh, my colleague has uh, addressed the thing with the return and, uh, and, um, and the, the problematic of the migration, the young people are mainly the clients for migration because they have a lack of future, they have a lack of perspective. The approach of the trust fund is tailor-made and is mostly adapted to local context and the need of our countries and obviously differs from countries to countries and it differs obviously between the transit countries and the origin countries. That is really important. Another thing that is coming on top of this migration is also the degradation of the security situation in the Sahel. Uh, the situation of 2015 is not the same than the situation now. So that means that we continue doing our efforts in job creation and in particular in the countries of departure, but we have also to address this increase of insecurity in the countries of transit, which mean um, the border between Mali, uh, Niger, Burkina Faso, um, and there we have uh, for the time being a big call for proposal of 66 million for NGOs to help and to uh, improve the resilience and the social cohesion in these uh, regions. Coming back to uh, job creation, um, we work um, through intervention aiming at, first of all, stimulating entrepreneurship and boosting the business environment. This is very important because these young people need to have the opportunity to uh, create a, a business, to create a small business and have access to, uh, for example, uh, first of all, training and that we do a training through uh, the, the TVET, uh, which is the Technical Vocational Education and Training. Uh, it is the Professionale Education, um, Formazione Professionale. Um, so this is important. And for other layers of population, uh, you have to know that we invest also a lot of money in Erasmus Plus that gives the opportunity to young people from Africa to come to universities in, in, uh, in Europe 
and to, um, let's say, have uh, important skills in order to... Uh, what we have to be uh, very careful on is that we don't have to make a, a brainwash, a brain... Um, uh, the brain that the population, the young people from uh, Africa doesn't, that does not leave Africa and doesn't... Um, um, prevent having uh, the brains in Africa instead of going to uh, Europe. So, this is uh, important. We um, go also for facilitation, the financial inclusion of beneficiaries. So, as you know, in Africa and other parts of the world, but in Africa in particular, the access to credit is a big issue. Then we work closely with microcredit um, uh, institutions in order to give the, the opportunity to, to these people and also in parallel we support self-employment scheme uh, again giving this financial education and access to finance uh, existing gaps. We uh, support innovative uh, uh, approaches to um, mobilize investment uh, but this is more in the um, uh, traditional development schemes with uh, the external investment plan and the guarantee plan that has been, um, let's say, promoted by uh, the communication of uh, President Juncker on the alliance or between the partner with uh, Europe and uh, the African countries. But this is more traditional, let's say, um, um, and long-term development. So, an important concept as well uh, in terms of, uh, let's say, intervention of the EU Trust Fund is the complementarity between the traditional long-term development and addressing the urgent situations. An important thing also is the coherence with the, the, the actions of the G5. So I don't know if you are familiar with the G5, but it is um, five countries that have a political agreement. Uh, it's the Mauritania, Mali, Burkina Faso, Niger and the Chad. And we work closely with them in order to address um, the needs of these five countries in the Sahel that are confronted with uh, this degradation of the security situation. Obviously, decent uh, life conditions, peace and security are preconditions for development and uh, unfortunately for the time being this, this situation is getting worse in in particular on Mali, Burkina Faso and uh, Niger, as well as in the Lac Chad with uh, the uh, Nigeria, Boko Haram and all these, uh, these problems. Um, some examples, so uh, since the launch of the EU Trust Fund, we have created more than 11,700 jobs, which is quite important. You will say that it's a drop in the big sea, but uh, it's uh, at least something uh, important. And uh, uh, nearly 15,000 individuals have benefited from professional training and skill development. And I would like also to point out that uh, gender is something that is really important for the UTF as well and from these 15,000 individuals we have 42% of women involved in this uh, creation of jobs. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. De Verp. And now the floor goes to Seydou Konate, who will talk about a particular experience. Seydou arrived uh, in Italy many years ago, and now he has set up something different. Thank you, and good morning, everybody. 
I would like to bring my contribution to uh, this uh, session. And what I would like to talk about uh, is the uh, story of uh, the Balafon Cooperative uh, and what we do for integration and for the people. Balafon was established in 2006. It was my project. I arrived in Italy in 1991 after experiencing many, many difficulties and sometimes painful difficulties. Just like many other migrant people arriving in Italy and in particular in Europe. And at the beginning, I wanted to make my experience available for the uh, weaker part of the population. So to do this, I focused on migration. At the beginning, I started assisting people in bureaucratic stages, for example, the renewal of the residence permit and all the other documents needed. And uh, over the last few years, uh, the Balafon Cooperative has been specializing in uh, managing arrivals. We are the first reality like this in the province of Varese in north of Italy. And in 2014, when the emergency in northern Africa materialized, uh, we made ourselves available and we uh, worked on diffused uh, welcoming, uh, which we think is better because we managed the small numbers in the whole province of Varese. We are the first uh, kind of reality like this. Uh, and given that the president of Balafon is a former migrant, it is true that in 1991, when I arrived in Italy, uh, was not uh, in a big boat like the pictures that we see today, but uh, I had direct experience and I wanted to give some quality to the work I do because I feel kind of indebted um, with respect to uh, how I was welcomed in Italy. And I'm going to explain myself. In 1991, when I arrived in Italy, I was uh, hosted by a family in Naples. They treated, my li they treated me like their son. And uh, I realized that such a um, free, heart heartful uh, welcoming was really what I needed to make a leap forward in my presence in Italy. That's why uh, Balafon every day tries to uh, speak directly to the people that come to us. We look at them in the eyes. We don't just manage migrant people. We also have a an educational uh, organization for minors in Italy and for migrants that are not accompanied by their parents. At our headquarters, we also opened uh, uh, health care centers and three teaching rooms because we uh, don't want the people that come just to wake up and eat and sleep. They have to do something. The time available to them they, it has to be used uh, to get to uh, legalization of their position. And if they have to go back to their country, they need to have uh, some knowledge, some experience to start something new. And we do this because we try to work at best uh, being conscious of what we do. And we have a team working in this way. We have a direct relationship with the people and it's not easy to talk to them because sometimes the people that come to us are adult people, they have habits and we sometimes manage, do not manage to uh, deal with our children at home. So how can we pretend to do this with the people that come to us if we don't know them? Well, tomorrow we're going to uh, inaugurate uh, a school. Well, we're going to uh, go to a school that uh, the municipality asked us to repaint inside. So all the walls were repainted by a person that was part of our association. And we always try to involve uh, these uh, people in the municipalities where we are present to uh, carry out uh, uh, social work, uh, caritas, is uh, an important collaborator in this respect. The majority of volunteers in Caritas are 
uh, elderly people, but our uh, guys are strong and big, and so they can really help in moving boxes and uh, manage things. And uh, all this help is given to also local cultural associations. Sometimes we have uh, uh, public servants in the municipalities telling us, what if we ask them to go and clean a certain road? Well, we can do that. And uh, we try to overcome barriers. And we've tried to give training on the safety at work. Those people working in the steel sector cannot really have the same training as in other sectors and they need uh, further skills. So this uh, standard safety at work situ uh, course training course was very useful and we also organized a food safety course. And this was done to give some help to the people finding a job in the food sector. Even a dishwasher, if uh, he or she had some training, can do better than mm, other situations where training was not given at all. And people are more autonomous. We also started some uh, insurance policies because uh, in case of uh, uh, incidents uh, and there could be problems. So we really want to do something useful for the community. What we always say to these people is that they are hosted, they are welcomed by this nation, so they have to make themselves useful. Some people attend Italian language courses and they have some training, but that's not enough. They have free time, so that free time must be used to do all the things that I've just mentioned. And, of course, there's a whole organization behind. I'm here, but there's actually 30 people with a salary that uh, are working on this project uh, regularly. A lot of efforts are needed, but uh, and we want to continue to do this, but uh, the government uh, didn't really support us. We had a 45% cut in funding. And the main point, uh, basically, it concerns the integration of these uh, people. At the stage where we are, we don't want just to provide uh, uh, accommodation and food. We want to form citizens that if they are going to stay here, they have to be ready to live in this country. So we give them uh, information about uh, rules and laws and about the Italian constitution. We would like really to live together with these people who are going to be new citizens that can bring harmony to this country because this is a problem that affects everybody. We also promote the circular migration and I'm going to explain this. There is migrant people arriving in Italy or in Europe and we wish these people could have some training, some education to then go back to the country of origin. I myself started doing something in this respect. We created a mechanical workshop where we try to give some job opportunities. But we don't want just to limit ourselves to job opportunities. We would like to train many young people. Maybe you don't know, but in the Ivory Coast, we overcome 10 years of crisis. And over the years of crisis, teenagers learned how to use weapons, but they didn't have an education. They didn't get uh, training to have a job and to be part of a social network of the place where they live. And with this uh, workshop, we would like to be accredited by uh, the state officially. And uh, it's not easy, but we are on the right track. And uh, uh, we pray God for uh, this objective to be achieved. And if we accredit it, we can set up uh, dedicated modules for them, because they don't even have a second grade uh, uh, diploma so that they can be part of the job market and be autonomous. Last year, we also acquired a piece of land and uh, we would like to use this uh, to fight against uh, starvation. Of course, it is just a, a small action, 
but uh, we have a tropi tropical climate and a couple a month ago we brought uh, a tractor and other machineries and this is in the Ivory Coast yes and this way we want to start an agricultural project not just to provide food but to train other young people because if they are trained they have a job they have an education and they avoid putting their lives at risk going through the desert because uh, everybody knows about uh, the shipwrecks in the Mediterranean but the desert is an open-air cemetery M not many people know about this and we want to avoid all this with our friend Giancarla we had talks and we have an awareness raising project we do welcoming activities in Italy but we also do awareness raising uh, without having the pretension to uh, stop uh, uh, departures but uh, you know I am a former migrant and with our experience we do want to contribute a lot in this stage and we want to do awareness raising in two stages first stage is in Italy from uh, Varese to Palermo from the north to the south among all the uh, communities from the Ivory Coast to train them to teach them how things are in reality the difficulties that are present we don't want people to just uh, get information from social network maybe people go to a mall and they take a picture and they think that Italy is a wonderful place but that's not the case and then we also want to do awareness raising the Ivory Coast there's uh, three cities that have been selected that are the main points of departure and we want to be in schools to explain our experience all the difficulties and this can be done in a team of men and women that work day and night both in Italy and in the Ivory Coast to achieve this objective. I would like to thank you all and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Then there will be a uh, second quick round. I'm now going to give the floor uh, to uh, Ambassador Ranieri Sabatucci. So, uh, we're talking here about uh, the freedom to go back to one's country. That can be uh, uh, an advantage for a migrant uh, who's lived a positive experience uh, here in Europe, but then can go back uh, to uh, their own country to contribute to its development. Thank you for the floor. Uh, migration is a very complex topic, and sometimes a toxic one. But in terms of relations between Africa and Europe, it does provide opportunities. Let me give you the context. I'm dealing with relations with the African Union. For those of you who don't know, uh, it's like uh, the uh, European Union in Africa. It's different uh, because uh, the priorities are different. Uh, but the African Union is an organization promoting integration of the African continent. Uh, uh, on uh, peace and uh, security. For peace and security, they are even more advanced than the EU. At an economic level, uh, they lag behind. But uh, they are uh, uh, making fast progress. One of the fields where the African Union uh, does not have any mandate is migration. And uh, this is more or less alike in Europe, because Europe does not have exclusive mandate on migration. It does intervene on some issues, but not on all of them. And uh, mm, this is even less so for the African Union. Secondly, as the African Union does not have any mandate, but since migration is a very important topic for uh, Africa, uh, it is a problem for us, but it, all, it is also a problem for our African counterparts. To African leaders, migration is an economic, social, and a political problem. 
but the problem uh, is managed by the member states uh, of the uh, uh, African Union. So we've always had very difficult relations because uh, uh, in order to show uh, uh, that it had an added value, until two or three years ago, uh, the African Union has always had uh, very uh, uh, conflict, conflict rela relations with uh, the EU. It was promoting the idea that Europe should be much kinder, more open, and so on and so forth. This has radically changed. Um, and it was so two or three years ago for two reasons. First of all, because there was a turnover uh, in the uh, uh, top uh, uh, positions of the African Union, just like the European Union, there have been European elections. Uh, from the 1st of November, there will be a new European management. And for the African Union, that was in March 2017. The new leaders have had a, have a more pragmatic approach. So the idea to find solutions uh, for them now is not only to be is no longer to be hostile to the European Union, but trying to find common solutions. And then, uh, in November uh, 2017, in the Ivory Coast, uh, there was a summit between the European Union and the African Union. The leaders of both sides met. And that was a few days uh, 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 after uh, there was uh, uh, these uh, big news on uh, uh, prisoners in Libya that were sold as slaves. Now, the problem of slavery is a significant one in Africa. It is uh, uh, one of the strongest emotional problems in Africa. It is very shocking for them to see uh, their brothers uh, sold as slaves. And that was uh, uh, right at the time of the summit with the European Union. Hence, uh, uh, the two sides uh, were strongly willing to collaborate together. To the Africans, uh, it was really unacceptable uh, to see those uh, images. There was a market of slavery that was uh, incredible, uh, and uh, it unleashed very strong feelings in Africans. And therefore, it was the right time for the European Union to explain its own stance uh, and try and explain what we could do together. So, right before uh, the uh, um, beginning of the summit, uh, uh, the leaders of the European Union, uh, the African Union, and Mrs. Mogherini met with the Secretary General of the United Nations and said, OK, let's do something together. Let's." Uh, implement uh, an operation to facilitate the repatriation of uh, migrants in Libya who want to go back home so, on a voluntary basis. That was an agreement signed uh, at the end of November. Funds were immediately allocated uh, uh, to set up operational systems. They were strengthened in order to uh, um, implement uh, this operation. So far, 45,000 migrants from Libya have been uh, uh, repatriated uh, uh, and reintegrated back home. Five times uh, as much as the number of migrants uh, who arrived in Europe this year. This is an example of what uh, existing cooperation can be. Cooperation is no longer as in I'm helping you, but there is a search for common interests. So we both have a problem. If the two problems overlap, let's see how we can find a common solution to solve a common problem. And this is a classic example of this approach, uh, which works very well. And we've managed to facilitate the repatriation and reintegration of 45,000 migrants. The role of the European Union was to uh, give funds, uh, finance the operation. The role of the African Union was to mobilize and promote the operation uh, among uh, 
uh, origin countries to facilitate repatriation. And the work of the United Nations was to implement the operation as a whole. After Christmas and New Year's Eve, uh, more than 13,000 uh, uh, migrants uh, had already returned. Now the operation uh, is still underway. That was a symptom. The problem of Libya has uh, not been solved. Until uh, we have a problem in Libya, there's going to be a problem of migrants. So the final solution uh, to this uh, problem uh, consists in the solution of the Libyan conflict. We're now uh, uh, strongly working with the uh, African Union in order to convince the Libyans to close down their detention camps. Detention camps are one of the problems connected to the fact that there was this slavery market. And, and uh, we're trying to understand how we can collaborate to uh, um, uh, fight against uh, uh, human traffickers. Even in Libya, often it's the managers of detention camps who are illegal traffickers. And we try to see how we can replicate this in other African countries. So the main objective is, of my presentation is to, uh, ex was to explain to you that uh, a collaboration between the EU and the African Union is being promoted in order to uh, solve a common problem with a common solution. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been uh, uh, very uh, interesting. Thank you to uh, uh, the uh, EU ambassador at the African Union. Now, let's go for a, a second round very quickly. Um, so, we have a whole s uh, series of uh, 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 African problems here in very few uh, uh, speeches, uh, the verb was uh, mentioning about uh, the peace and security problems in Sahel, uh, in Chad. Uh, Seydou uh, was uh, telling us about uh, uh, the journey in the desert, uh, which is uh, uh, very dangerous. Uh, some of my colleagues uh, have uh, talked about it and written about it. Uh, uh, Domenico Quirico on the newspaper La Stampa uh, was the only Italian journalist uh, who uh, uh, explained step by step uh, this uh, journey of human trafficking from Central Africa to Libya. And uh, this is a tragedy. I will now ask a question to Giancarla uh, Boretti. Uh, AFSI is uh, uh, conceived and perceived uh, and held in a certain way. How can we help AFSI in taking action in countries uh, such as Tunisia and Niger where you're operating uh, and uh, 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 you are trying to promote circular migration? Well, I believe that the notion of circular migration is particularly interesting, but we need to start providing some content that are probably derived from experience. And also the other colleagues present here can help us understand with which tools it is possible to implement processes of circular migration. Briefly, what we mean by circular migration is this. It is the journey that people do to get to Europe and so they can have uh, an investment in education and then they can reinvest with uh, support from the African Fund or other resources in generating job opportunities in the countries of origin. I think that's what we mean. Another form of circular migration is this, favoring education of, at a managerial level with higher qualifications and the European Union finance and projects in this respect, especially in uh, Northern Africa, in Tunisia, in Morocco.
so we talk about uh, education of people in uh, from these countries which is done in Italy and these people would then go back to their country to start businesses so there's different forms that can be used to, to different processes that can be used for circular migration uh, AFSI would like to stick to its uh, main vision, main uh, statute, uh, and above all, we work in vocational training. We're also trying to give support to the creation of small companies, both individual companies and uh, larger, more collective companies. We try to respect the anthropology and the geography of the countries. Working in Lebanon with Syrian refugees is certainly different with respect to working in the Ivory Coast or in Nigeria, of course. We try and work uh, uh, on projects that can be funded, uh, that are funded. Uh, that is the uh, background of AFSI sees uh, the quest for support, for, for example, institutional support. I'll give an example. We made an agreement with the municipality of Milan that we, as AFSI Finance, fund for those who decide to leave. So we uh, more or less made uh, 100,000 euros available so that those in the metropolitan area of Milan that decide to go back can have an opportunity to receive some training so that then they can be sure that they will find a job once they go back. So this kind of uh, training is aimed uh, at a repatriation. So it is an investment here. Uh, it's an education experience here for then having an investment in their country of origin. And uh, this kind of uh, plan uh, can be carried out thanks to contacts that we have with companies, for example, that we know to start also job opportunities. Nothing can be done alone. Collaboration is fundamental indeed. The collaboration with the families of those going back to the country of origin and the possibility of uh, supporting initiatives in the small towns where these people will go back to that is creating job uh, opportunities that are secure. For example, in Nigeria, the opportunity to go back is only through the international airport. Most people going back to Nigeria, however, come from Benin City, that is from the southern part of the country. So, we have um, organized uh, a group of people, a staff uh, uh, from AMSI in Nigeria, to be there and welcome these people uh, when they arrive and give these people some opportunities of job in Lagos too because there's many more job opportunities there compared to the ones available in Benin City then people can decide to go back to Benin City but we really insist uh, on education and support in the initial steps of uh, entrepreneurship when people go back to their countries. Then, Mr. De Verb, I wanted to ask you a question. You mentioned the creation of jobs as a fundamental way, as a core business of your trust fund for West Africa. What kind of jobs are we talking about? First of all, I would like to, to maybe add something on the circular migration because uh, it's a concept that we don't address as a EU trust fund because uh, migration, circular migration is a normal process and has been very old in Africa and uh, um, the ECOWAS UMOA they provide the liberty of uh, transit and uh, movement of the countries in West Africa. So many times we can have uh, people from Niger going to Libya or to Algeria. We have uh, movements from Togo, from Burkina Faso to uh, Côte d'Ivoire, um, etc. So migra circular migration has been an old phenomenon and not a new thing linked with the migration as, it's, uh, as it is now uh, and in the debate. Now, to respond to your question, um, the, um, we, we have, let's say, two, uh, two parts in the, in the uh, formazione professionale. Um, we have the formal one and the informal one. 
Um, we focus a lot on the formal one uh, through this Formazione Professionale where uh, I, I, I mentioned already in my first intervention and for which we have these uh, 15,000 people uh, already, uh, let's say, uh, trained. Uh, for us, um, we have the same type of, im of, uh, for, of uh, trainings than uh, our colleague from uh, uh, the, the NGO has mentioned. So, uh, to, to be uh, uh, working in the workshops, to work in the automotive uh, sector, uh, we have also a lot uh, in terms of uh, the wood industry or the wood uh, workshops. Um, but also we work on agriculture, so um, we have the high intensity um, workforce, uh, HEMO, uh, for example, to um, uh, build back um, uh, agricultural, um, let's say, zones, um, to uh, have access to water, um, and also to build um, houses uh, destroyed by uh, the insecurity uh, conditions. So basically, uh, we can link also uh, these uh, professional um, uh, skills or professional uh, um, with the resilience. So if you take people in the zones where you have uh, this uh, jihadism, um, and the, the, the villages have been destroyed and the water um, uh, capture has been also destroyed, then we train people through NGOs as well or through uh, orga international organizations to restore the living conditions which is somewhere the basis for um, the livelihood and uh, and uh, and the uh, normal life of the people and to be able to return to their villages and to have a, nor a normal life what does balafon mean Balafon is a, a musical instrument like the uh, xylophonus uh, from the Ivory Coast. Well, it's actually used uh, throughout uh, Western Africa. It can change name from country to country. Um, but uh, uh, first and foremost, it is a communication tool. Uh, because uh, we do uh, what we call uh, uh, initiation. Uh, my father belongs to a tribe, Xenophon, uh, and uh, in the initiation, uh, you have to uh, go and do uh, a training in the wood. A child uh, from seven to a teenager can do the initiation, and in the wood, they are trained to become man. What does that mean? Uh, at seven years of age, they start uh, becoming uh, a farmer, a hunter. The hunter is not just the one uh, taking meat and food at home, uh, but uh, is a healer. This training lasts about seven years. They can learn a job. Uh, and uh, after seven years, uh, at 13 or 14 years of age, uh, uh, kids uh, can get married, they're ready to get married, because after initiation they are men. I'm over 50, but uh, at my age uh, I'm not considered as a man because I haven't done the initiation. Today initiation uh, uh, is no longer done this way. Uh, uh, they uh, just go and do the initiation uh, during the uh, uh, summer uh, period. Uh, but just to continue promoting our culture. So to go back to your, to your question, uh, Balafon is first and foremost a communication tool. So during an official event, uh, the sound of Balafon conveys a message and those who have not done the initiation cannot understand it. Uh, the sound can stand for a challenge or for something else. Well, I kept it short just to explain to you what really uh, Balafon means. Now, Ambassador, before opening up the Q&A session, 
can circular migration really be one of the possible solutions to the problem? Not the solution, because uh, no one knows what the solution is. We mentioned about peace, security, economic development, culture, uh, communication, uh, knowledge. But circular migration can be an attempt. Yes. I mean, everything is important. You learned about, you, you heard about different experiences today. There is a different ways to uh, uh, act on uh, migration in a positive way. And uh, uh, we've mentioned but a few of them. A policy on uh, migration uh, uh, must be much wider than that, must be a very uh, wide package going beyond migration. One of the uh, uh, frustrations of President Juncker was the idea uh, that uh, uh, we talk about Africa just when we talk about migration, but actually Africa it is indeed an opportunity beyond migration. It's the continent with the second most important economic growth. It's creating uh, an economic market of more than one billion people. So the better way to find a solution to migration uh, well, I have the impression that the Chinese have realized that before us in Europe. Well, the Chinese have realized that, uh, but not to the uh, extent, uh, uh, to the uh, maximum extent, as in uh, spending the time uh, to see Chinese uh, uh, as competitors uh, is somewhat limiting for us. Um, I think that Europe does need to invest. Uh, Circular migration is one of the uh, most important aspects uh, uh, in an integrated approach, in an integrated strategy uh, on Africa. It is useful to both Africa and Europe, but this is not the only possible thing. Many things can be done that we can do. And honestly, if there is a continent which does have an advantage on anyone else, it's Europe, because we are the closest continent, because Africa is the continent we know best, and that the Africans know best. So it's up to us, Europe, to take advantage of this situation, and not just looking at others with envy or rage. Yes, it's up to us to take action, and uh, circular migration is uh, certainly uh, uh, one of the uh, many things that can be done and can be useful. Okay, uh, I'm going to give uh, 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 the floor. We now still have 10 minutes before uh, concluding. I'm now going to give you the floor for questions, but before that, uh, 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 I want to recall you that donations are of the utmost importance in the meeting. It doesn't matter how much you donate, but it's a simple way to contribute uh, to uh, uh, keep uh, this place uh, going. You now have the opportunity uh, to donate uh, uh, something directly to the volunteers wearing the red t-shirt with the slogan Dona Ora, donate now. Are there any questions from the audience? I will take two or three questions. I'm Benetti from Venice. Well, we heard the different speakers, uh, and it seems uh, from what you said that the phenomenon of migration has been solved, but this is not the case. The Italian people does not want, do not want uh, uh, migration, wild migration, uh, as it has been called. In the previous government, during the previous government, uh, uh, some thousands of migrants have arrived, and they cannot be uh, managed. The flow of migration has not has failed. I want to ask uh, three questions to the ambassador. Over the past 50 years. Uh, what have African countries uh, to develop uh, despite all the money that has been given uh, uh, to Africa? To the president of the cooperative, uh, I say that uh, funds have been cut uh, because many cooperatives have stolen money from Italians. Uh, there's mafia. In Veneto, in the region where I come from, uh, prefects uh, and uh, uh, um, 
authorities uh, have been reported to the police because money has been stolen from the cooperatives. To the lady, Mrs. Boreati, I want to say, yeah, let's help them at home. Okay, there's a project, Kuam, in uh, uh, Padua. Uh, doctors go down uh, to uh, Africa. Let's help them at home, at their own home, because uh, we know that we spent a lot of money to welcome them. 30 billion people that we have spent and have taken away from our own families uh, and uh, to give them. Thank you because you listened very carefully. Here we talked about uh, the alternative to uh, illegal migration. Maybe you didn't catch the issue. Today the topic was an alternative to illegal migration. Then you were saying the Italian people uh, does not want this. Uh, this is your own personal opinion. And this is your opinion, okay. Maybe you're right. Uh, but uh, I do believe that we've seen that Italian cooperation has uh, some limits, uh, especially in the field of integration. We don't have to give uh, ideological judgments. Because just because prefects are reported to the police. Unfortunately, in Italy, whoever is doing something is reported to the police. Serious people know that, unfortunately, in Italy, very little has been done on integration versus the number of people who have arrived in Italy. If uh, in a classroom in the center of Rome there's uh, 20 kids uh, who cannot speak Italian, there's something going wrong. There's something which is not working in the way we have managed the integration, and this is certainly true. However, today's topic, uh, and then I'm going to give the floor to uh, uh, the speakers, uh, today's topic is, uh, is there any alternative to human trafficking? Is there an alternative to illegal migration? Is there an alternative to uh, contemporary slavery? This is uh, today's topic. I understand. This is uh, 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 not something very trendy and very sexy as a topic. You would have liked, you would have preferred maybe uh, a, um, uh, a topic uh, where uh, that could raise more conflicts, but we want to be reasonable here. Maybe there's another question here. Uh, I have been working as a teacher in a migrant center in the north of Italy, and I am deeply convinced that the system of uh, big uh, centers to welcome refugees has failed. All our efforts uh, should be used uh, to host uh, migrants in families or in small communities uh, where a few migrants uh, can be hosted because uh, that promotes integration from a social and cultural point of view in a fast and effective way. Whereas uh, big centers where uh, refugees uh, are welcomed uh, become a sort of ghettos and things become uh, more and more difficult. So, how can we uh, promote uh, this change? I'll be very short. My name is Paolo. I came here uh, to uh, uh, see an opportunity for debate uh, and not for conflict. Uh, today, uh, in Italy, there's people saying no to migration and on the other, uh, people saying yes to migration. But the problem is that uh, we must uh, focus on facts uh, helping us to understand uh, uh, what illegal migration is uh, uh, and how integration can be made. We can not only say yes and no, we cannot divide between uh, uh, the good and the bad, uh, but we have to think together and uh, make a debate uh, on how practically uh, we can provide uh, a positive solution uh, to these issues. My name is Giulia. I've just finished school uh, 
and I have to choose uh, the university to attend. If I wanted to work in this field, what faculty, what department, university department should I attend? Because I uh, realize I'm half Italian, I'm half Brazilian, and uh, I see that uh, this is a very interesting topic for me. So I wish to help, but I don't know how to do it. So how can I do it? How can I help? Maybe Boreati can answer uh, this question. Now, let's go very fast. We know the topics. Well, yes, I think that uh, there could be different attitudes. Uh, one can be on the defense side, and this can be an option. If somebody says that it is possible to stop migration, well, just let me know when in history this has ever been possible. So when you accept this, then it is easier to find solutions. So the options, let's not let them enter, let's stop migration, does not exist, period. Please give me an example of a period in history where this was the case. Number two. I thought I presented a different uh, picture of what uh, we normally read in newspapers. That is, Africa is not just a country where there's a desperation, there's been progress there. And I've said that uh, it is growing by 4% on a yearly basis at the current state. If you want to invest, where do you want to go? where growth stands at 1% because the economy is mature? Or do you want just to jump on a bandwagon where it is running at a very faster, at a much faster speed? This is the situation in Africa where there is not so much integration. Can you imagine that? Only 15% the, of the commerce in Africa take place between different African countries. In Europe, this is more than 70%. There's a 1.2 billion people there, so there's a great opportunity, and it's only by working in this kind of dimension or by doing what we do at the European level. Maybe people don't know that, but we've been working in this respect for years. There's been a reduction in conflicts in Africa. There's been transition in Sudan, for example. A 30-year-old dictatorship is becoming a democracy. This was the result obtained by the African Union. And why is it so? Because there is uh, integration programs by the African Union, by the European Union, and the result is peace. We haven't had any conflict for 70 years. That's not by chance. Uh, just look at history. This is the first time in history where no conflicts uh, have uh, occurred in Europe. And in Africa, this is also occurring. There's uh, fewer conflicts, fewer migrants, more economic opportunities. So the option not to have people coming here doesn't exist. Whereas if we talk about opportunities to benefit from all this together, yes, they are available. And say do very briefly. I would like to uh, answer to our friend uh, about the people that speculated on the money uh, for these uh, welcome projects. Our projects are public and uh, if you can our balance sheets are uh, transparent you can go and see where this 45% reduction is and what affected us we are participating in calls in projects to obtain funds and to continue to promote integration because if we uh, think uh, in a different way, we would have uh, citizens here in Italy that didn't have the opportunity to integrate themselves, and this would be extremely dangerous. The reason why we didn't turn our back when we had our funds cut is because we just didn't want to tell the people that we were receiving, we're sorry, goodbye, we don't have any money. And then we have tens of people working in this reality. We used to be 45 with a funds cut. We had to uh, fire some people that had a short-term contract. These 
are not foreign people. Uh, people always say the migrants uh, earn 35, 40, but so many families work in this reality. We have 32 families, Italian families, that are working in this reality. So we have to work uh, consciously. Our balance sheets are uh, public, you can uh, look at it whenever you want. Those that uh, uh, did it wrongly must be punished, but you just can't uh, generalize, overgeneralize. And then the recommendation for this young lady that uh, is looking for uh, a education at university. Well, to your right, you have a colleague from AFSI who works in education, and she can be the right person to give you some recommendations. But I must tell you that there's uh, many departments uh, that uh, have courses that uh, deal with international cooperation. This can be law schools or political science schools with courses that uh, relate to international cooperation. And there's also some universities in Italy that have specialized uh, programs to work in both international agencies and uh, in the activities uh, related to international cooperation. Italy has many, many uh, good programs in this respect. I would like to thank uh, all the colleagues uh, that participated in this uh, debate. Well, we have to remember that we are the history. And uh, even before a big issue like uh, migration, the good position is uh, the right position is never getting angry or getting anxious. No, we have to think about the future, our future, our kids' future, and our, the future of our continent and of the African continent. Thank you.